Hi everyone, Louie here. I want to show a fun little project I've been working on to help people do homebrew game development using web technologies. Now, it's not specific to handheld devices. Um, you can, for example, grab a, a gamepad and plug it into a desktop computer or a laptop uh, and run the same software. Um, but I find these little retro devices to be a lot of fun, so we're going to get started with them. Now, these ones in particular are made by a company called Anbernic. Um, they have obviously different screen sizes and controls, uh, but they all have the same guts inside, which is a quad-core ARM64 with a gig of RAM. Now, the uh, stock operating system that comes on them is fine. You can uh, just fire it up and start playing games. But, you know, even if you're not interested in doing game development on these, um, there are much better options than the stock operating system. So I'm going to power this thing down, pop out this little SD card, and um, upgrade this to a different Linux firmware. So if you're new to retro gaming and running emulators, or you don't yet own one of these retro handheld devices, a great place to get started is Batocera. Now this is a fantastic Linux distribution that has everything included. You can throw this on an old PC or a Raspberry Pi or a newer PC if you want better performance for the more high-end emulators. Plug in a game powder too and you'll have a great time. Now Newly is a fork of Batocera that's aimed more specifically at these small devices. Um, and what we're going to do is take Newly and put it on uh, the device I was just showing off. So we'll go to the Newly uh, distribution GitHub. Uh, we'll scroll down to releases and we're going to pick out an image and download uh, in this case the RG35XX SP. I know these are fun names by Ann Bernick, uh, but this one right here is that little clamshell device that looks like an old uh, Game Boy Advance SP. And so I'm going to download this image here and we'll save that. I like to use Belina Etcher to write the images to the SD cards. It's cross-platform, Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. I'm going to just pick out that uh, image I downloaded. I'm going to pick out the SD card. Make sure you get the right one here. Don't image your, uh, you know, your your desktop, uh, its operating system or anything like that. We are just wanting to ride, on this case, to a 32 gig card. Um, and this isn't the one that the device came with. Um, the ones that they come with might not be of great quality, so it's up to you. But you can, um, you know, SD cards are pretty cheap, so uh, I just recommend using a good one. And then we're going to tell it to flash. Okay, I'm going to remove the SD card from my laptop and plug it into the little gaming device. Okay, the first boot of this thing is going to do a little bit of initializing, uh, resizing the file system to match the size of the SD card. So give this thing a minute and it should be ready. Okay, now that we have newly installed on here, we're going to do a few more steps just to get this thing ready. Now, um, it's going to be a little hard to see the screen here, but luckily these things have a mini HDMI. Uh, output on the back of these so I'm going to plug this in now I appreciate Newly's default selection of music uh, but for the purposes of this video I'm going to I hit the start button to bring up the settings I'm going to go into sound settings and turn off front-end music okay the next thing we want to do is go into network settings now um, even before I set up Wi-Fi I'm going to change the host name and this is mostly because I have multiple of these devices on my network and they're going to by default create a network share so that we can move files back and forth um, I'll just name this one newly SP so I know which one it is on my network and uh, then I'm going to enable Wi-Fi and I will plug in my uh, home network settings here now I found that after plugging in the network settings, sometimes it takes a minute for Wi-Fi settings to take. Um, also changing the host name um, doesn't seem to happen immediately, so I'm just going to go ahead and restart the system. Okay, now we're running. We've got Wi-Fi enabled. Um, the default install of Newly doesn't actually have very many games, but it does have some homebrew stuff. It does have the ability to download more. You've got this thing on the network if you wanted to put ROMs on it. Um, all of that stuff is ready to go. Um, it does have, though, this uh, side note, Old Towers on Sega Mega Drive. I think this game is fantastic. Um, anyways, check that one out if it, it comes with Newly. Pygame is also installed on here, so if you're a Python developer, you like doing um, using Pygame to create games, that's also ready to go. 
Now, I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to show us how to do game development, homebrew game development, uh, using web technologies. And you might notice uh, that there isn't actually an install of uh, Chrome or Firefox or anything like that on here uh, by default. Now. These things, like I said, they're quad cores, which is awesome, um, ARM64 chips. Uh, they've got about a gig of RAM, and a lot of modern browsers use a whole lot of RAM. So what I'm working on is a way to use web technologies, you know, JavaScript, uh, maybe TypeScript, WebAssembly, those types of things um, on these devices without actually having a browser installed. So we're going to go ahead and get into that now. Most of these Linux distributions for retro gaming include something called Emulation Station. Now, Emulation Station is an open source a bit of software to launch uh, emulators. So things like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. But you can configure them to run anything you want. Um, so Newly includes a whole bunch of emulators that it can launch, um, as well as uh, Pi Game and other things. So what I'm working on here is the ability to launch JavaScript games. Now, uh, like I said, we don't have a web browser, so I'm building a a compatibility layer for running JavaScript games without the web browser um, and my good friend Sheldon McGee he's helping me uh, do this as well now um, what sort of APIs do we have ready well um, pretty much the basics to get a game working so we have canvas um, in 2d to you know draw to the screen um, web audio to play sound effects and uh, music in your game um, handling of keyboard events uh, gamepad API, because we're going to use gamepads on these retro devices, the little built-in ones. Uh, local storage to maybe save game progress. Um, now, WebAssembly is a, a little uh, more advanced topic, but that's it, the ability to compile, say, C++ or Rust um, into a format that we can also use. Um, web workers is the standard to do threading. So if uh, you know we've got four cores, let's use all of them when we're doing a game for um, better performance. Um, I am still working on uh, doing 3D acceleration with WebGL, but the main goal here is that I don't want anybody to have to write anything specific to these retro handheld devices. They should just be writing games targeting a web browser, but having the ability to run on these devices without actually having a browser installed. So that means um, all of these things, web audio and gamepad API, I've done implementations on that actually run on Node. So Node.js um, is going to be running on the device and um, using some technologies under the covers here, uh, one of them being SDL to bring up a window. Um, there's a Canvas implementation um, that is taken from Chrome called Skia Canvas that we've got node bindings that we can use. And uh, so basically piecing all these things together to give you just enough game engine support without having to actually have a browser installed. Okay, so let's get this JavaScript game launcher installed. Um, Sheldon has built uh, installers for Newly and uh, Batacera and Rocknik so far, um, and we've got more on the way. Now, uh, what we have to do here is uh, pretty simple. We're going to SSH into that device. Now, remember, I set that thing up on the network so that um, I should be able to get to it um, using Wi-Fi here. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to SSH root at Newly SP and say yes here. The default root password for the Newly devices is Linux. And here we are. Now the home directory when you're logging in as root um, on Newly is user data slash system. And all we have to do now is copy this one command here and paste that into our terminal. And what this is doing is it is preparing the system. It's installing Node.js. It's going to uh, copy the files that we need for the game launcher and put that all into place. Okay, so we have the game launcher installed. Um, it also configured uh, emulation stations so that the games will show up in the launcher. Um, but there is no games or uh, ROMs in the system yet. Now we have some examples. Now these aren't particularly great games, but it's really just sort of demo projects to show you how to get started doing um, homebrew development. And that is linked in the same repo and a similar command here. We're going to copy this command also put this into the terminal and that will um, download some of these sample games. Now with the games installed and the JavaScript launcher installed, we're going to reboot. Uh, you could do that from the 
command line if you're logged in with SSH, or you could do it from the device itself. Now with the device restarted, uh, we have a new option in our menu, JavaScript games. All right, let's go in. Let's do Space Invaders. Now this is a game written for Canvas in JavaScript. All right, and you, if you hit start and hotkey, you'll pop back out to the menu. Um, now, there is an, one last additional setup piece here. Um, some of these games have dependencies. So uh, simple Box2D and Box2D version 3 in particular, um, they have a package JSON in their folder which lists the dependencies. This is typical of JavaScript development, right? If you have dependencies, other libraries that you're going to use, you'll um, have to specify them in package JSON. All right, well, what that means is we have to um, install those. Now, I would like for this JavaScript game launcher to do this for you automatically, but for right now, um, this is an additional step and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, we're gonna shell back in to um, our little newly device and we're going to go up a directory from the home directory and then into the ROMs folder. Now, in the ROMs folder, there is now a JavaScript games, a JS games folder. And these are the games that we uh, installed with that script earlier. And if I go into simple box 2D, you'll see there is a package JSON, uh, but there is no node modules, which means the dependencies have not yet been installed. I'm just gonna do an NPM I. And back on the device, if we launch this, Okay, all this is is using the Box2D physics engine and allowing us to drop some uh, shapes in here, uh, which is kind of neat because this Box2D engine was written in, uh, this version was written in C++, compiled to WebAssembly, and um, it's running within our game. All right, there you have it. This is homebrew game development using web technologies on a relatively inexpensive retro handheld device. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see, you know, actual uh, game development coding um, using this platform or uh, more features of the platform or anything like that. Thanks.